Fall was always an exciting time for auto enthusiasts because of all the new model introductions. We all know the industry has changed considerably since those days, including that many cars no longer bow in during the fall. Like the LHS and New Yorker that are already in showrooms, and the upcoming Neon that we'll show you in a few months. However, this is still an exciting and busy time because of changes to the existing lines. It can be tough keeping track of all these changes for the new model year, but that's our goal for this month's Master Tech. Specifically, you'll see what's new with existing engines, transmissions, and chassis components. You'll also have a look at new interior and exterior features, restraint systems, and minivan wiring changes. Lastly, you'll see what's new with Chrysler's strong environmental program. Well, that's a lot to cover, so let's get started with a look at engine changes. Some of the biggest news for Chrysler Corporation was connected with the release of the new Ram pickup. Dodge dealers already received a bonus master tech on the Ram pickup, explaining the changes to the Magnum Series engines used on the Ram. And that information is good for the new Ram van and wagon, as well as the Dakota. Jeep personnel who have not seen this release will be interested to know that the 5.2 liter Magnum engine used in the Grand Cherokee has a new camshaft. This new camshaft broadens the torque curve to give 30 more pound-feet of torque below 3,200 RPM. This gives the driver a better launch off the line. This change also improves towing fuel economy by allowing the transmission to stay in overdrive more. On top of the increased torque, the new camshaft also reduces valve train noise. Next on our list of engine changes is the 3.8 liter V6 that was used in the now discontinued New Yorker 5th Avenue and Imperial. For 94, it's found a new home in the Grand Voyager, the Grand Caravan, and the Town and Country. But that's not the only change. The combustion chamber has been redesigned to remove the valve shrouding that led to faster combustion. Removing this shrouding increases airflow and slows combustion for quieter operation without adversely affecting combustion efficiency. The camshaft profile has also been changed to increase airflow and provide better dynamics for smoother high-speed operation. With changes like these, horsepower is increased from 150 to 162 at 4400 RPM. Torque is also increased from 203 pound-feet at 3,200 RPM to 213 pound-feet at 3,600 RPM. The same changes were made to the 3.3 liter V6 that is used in the Concorde, Intrepid, Vision, Voyager, Grand Voyager, Caravan, Caravan CV, and the Grand Caravan. These changes result in an 8 horsepower and 4 pound-feet of torque increase for the Concorde, Intrepid, and Vision models and a 12 horsepower and 9 pound-feet of torque increase for the Voyager and Caravan. In the continuing effort to lower exhaust emissions, the 3-liter V6 engine in the LeBaron Convertible, Spirit and Acclaim, Shadow and Sundance, Caravan, Caravan CV, and Voyager has been changed. The engine has revised pistons and heads. The new components minimize crevices which become small quench areas where fuel won't burn. By reducing such areas, exhaust emissions of unburned hydrocarbons have been reduced by 15 to 20 percent. The 2.5 liter engine and the 2.2 liter four cylinder engine have also been changed. Notice anything different about the head covers? They look the same as before, but both 2.2 and 2.5 engines have a new die cast aluminum head cover. It has a better surface than the previous cover and to further ensure a good seal, a one-piece formed seal gasket is used with the cover. Other engine-related changes include a new cooling fan on the Viper. Previously, there were two cooling fans. Now there's one fan with two speeds. This new fan has the same flow rate as the previous two. The fan shroud has also been changed to conform better to the radiator. Now let's look at a powertrain diagnostics change. 
Do you remember us mentioning in our January emission control systems update that data link connectors would be standardized throughout the industry? This change has already been made on all MMC products except laser and talon. Because of this, you'll need a special adapter to use the DRB2 scan tool on these MMC vehicles. The upcoming NEON will also have the new connector. The next generation scan tool will have the proper connector for these vehicles. We'll tell you about the DRB3 scan tool in depth in an upcoming Master Tech release. You can also refer to the August Tech News for more information on future diagnostic changes. In the unlikely event that you know someone who was holding off buying a Stealth RT Turbo because it wasn't fast enough, it's time to get him in the showroom. For 94, the Stealth RT gets a Gatrog six-speed transaxle. It's not only geared for quicker acceleration, though. This new transaxle also offers quieter highway cruising. All the gears on this new transaxle, called the W6MG1, are synchronized. That includes reverse. Another transmission change is the addition of an overdrive lockout switch on minivan instrument panels. This switch locks out the overdrive on the 41 TE transaxle to reduce unnecessary noise and busyness from the transaxle shifting in and out of overdrive during city driving. There will be a Master Tech quiz question about that new switch. Also new for 94 is an optional 30RH automatic transmission for 2.5 liter Jeep Cherokee and Wrangler. This three-speed has a computer-controlled torque converter clutch to aid in the reduction of engine noise while providing good fuel economy at highway speeds. The remaining news in transmissions deals with the use of the new NV3500 manual transmission and also higher wide-open throttle shift points on the 46RH transmission. Both these applications are on the 5.2-liter equipped Dakota but you can refer to the bonus release on the new RAM pickup for this information. As for transmission diagnostics, there is a new diagnostic trouble code for all vehicles equipped with the 41TE and the 42LE electronic four-speed automatic transaxles. Code 35 is set by the transmission control module when the fluid level is too low to fill the clutch packs. Another change deals with the Quick Learn reprogramming feature of the MDS and scan tool that's used after the transmission control module has been replaced or after major transmission repairs. There are now upper and lower temperature limits to ensure that the values you enter are within the proper range. The upper limit is 200 degrees and the lower limit is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If the TCM needs to be replaced for a TSB warranty claim, you must now enter the TSB number into the TCM by using the scan tool with the 94 Super Cartridge. This ensures that the dealer is properly credited for the claim. Next, we'll take a look at some changes made to chassis components. But first, which vehicle or vehicles offers an overdrive lockout switch for 94? The answer is the 41 TE equipped minivans. For 1994, there's a new anti-lock brake system called Bendix Anti-Lock 4 on minivans, LeBaron sedan and convertible, the Spirit and Acclaim, and also on the Shadow and Sundance models. This new system replaces the Bendix Anti-Lock 10 system used on the minivans and the Bendix Anti-Lock 6 system used on the LeBaron sedan and convertible, the Spirit Acclaim models, and the Shadow Sundance models. This anti-lock system uses a conventional master cylinder and vacuum booster along with a hydraulic unit that contains the solenoid valves and motor-driven pump. The four solenoid valves have build and decay positions, but not a hold position. Also contained in the hydraulic unit are two high-pressure brake fluid accumulators that are filled by the pump motor only during ABS operation. This means you don't have to release pressure to do such things as adding brake fluid. 
By now, you should be very familiar with how such a system operates, since its components and operation are very similar to systems we've previously told you about. There is one important service note, however. The brakes cannot be bled using any kind of brake pressure bleeding equipment, since this does not develop enough pressure to remove all trapped air. Refer to your service manual for the proper procedure. Another change in brake systems is the use of new disc brake calipers on all four of the Stealth RT Turbo's wheels. The four piston fixed front calipers have larger pistons for more clamping force. For the same result on the rear brakes, the calipers have been upgraded from one piston sliding calipers to two piston fixed calipers. In more brake news, the 5.2 liter equipped Grand Cherokee Limited, SE, and Laredo now comes standard with four wheel disc brakes for more fade resistance over the previous rear drum setup. The parking brake uses a drum in hat arrangement. This operates like a drum brake inside the disc hub. If you've ever loved power steering for its ease of parking, but cursed its lack of feel at highway speeds, then this next new chassis component is just what you need. And yes, there will be a Master Tech quiz question on this. A new variable assist speed proportional power steering unit will be offered on the LHS, New Yorker, Concord, Intrepid, and Vision models for 94. The system provides full assist at speeds under about 25 miles per hour. But above 25, the assist decreases proportionally so that at 55 miles per hour, the assist is at the minimum. To do this, two discs separated by ball bearings are placed between the steering wheel and the pinion. A spring presses the discs together, making the wheel hard to turn because the bearings must be forced up their ramped grooves. To make the wheel easier to turn, power steering fluid presses against this spring's force. The amount of power steering assist is controlled by a solenoid valve that limits the size of an orifice that the fluid passes through. The solenoid valve is controlled by the solenoid control module, which is located on the steering gear. This module adjusts the amount of assist based on the vehicle's speed signal from the transmission control module. After another review question, we'll get inside the vehicles now for a look at the new interior features. The new Variable Assist Speed Proportional Power Steering System provides full assist under approximately what speed? The new system we mentioned provides full assist under approximately 25 miles per hour. Starting with the 94 model year, the Concord, Intrepid, and Vision will have a power moonroof option. Some of you may have noticed that this is already an option on the New Yorker and is standard on the LHS. The moonroof is driven by enclosed cables that are attached to a compact motor that sits at the rear of the structure. Another big change in interior features has taken place in the market-leading minivans. The minivan instrument panel has been redesigned with many switches moved from their previous locations. Now the switches are grouped together in control pods for higher visibility and ease of use. One of the controls that has been moved is the liftgate release. Previously it was in the center console. Now it's on the upper left knee bolster. The minivans also have a change in the middle bench seat. The seat now reclines 22 degrees for the comfort of children strapped into the integral child seats. Without the seat reclined, sleeping children in the safety seats tend to tilt their head forward in an uncomfortable position. In addition to the seat change, the front passenger seat on minivans now has six inches of travel. The seat travel lever does not obstruct the storage bin under the seat. The minivans also have an automatic power door lock system available for 94. The doors will lock automatically when all the doors are closed the vehicle is in gear and traveling above approximately 16 miles per hour. This feature can be turned on or off simply by cycling the ignition between off and run four times and then pressing the lock switch. The minivans have another change to the power locks. On previous models, if a front door was locked and then unlocked with the sliding door open, when the sliding door was closed, all the doors could have locked. For 94, the door lock memory has changed so that this will not happen. 
In addition to this automatic door lock feature, the minivans and the Ram van and wagon as well have a remote keyless entry system available for 94. The remote keyless entry module on the minivans is in the upper instrument panel above the radio. On the Ram van and wagon, it's under the instrument panel to the left of the brake pedal. This system has an omnidirectional transmitter with a 23-foot range. Since it's omnidirectional, it doesn't have to be aimed at the vehicle like other systems. Pressing the unlock button once unlocks the driver's door and turns on the courtesy lights. Pressing unlock again within five seconds unlocks all doors. Of course, pressing lock locks all doors. The horn will chirp to confirm that the doors are locked. On the minivans, the transmitter has a button to unlock the tailgate. The Ram van and wagon system does not have this button. Those are not the only changes related to the power door locks, though. The power door lock logic on the Colt and Summit, Colt, Vista, and Summit wagon, and the Stealth has also been revised. These vehicles equipped with power door locks now have the ability to unlock just the driver's door or all the doors from the outside driver's door lock cylinder. Cycling the key once unlocks just the driver's door. Cycling it twice unlocks all doors. The manual lock button on the inside of the driver's door will also now lock all doors on this central locking system. Another new feature is the vehicle theft alarm system that is standard on the LHS and optional on the New Yorker, Concord, Intrepid, and Vision. This system is integral with the body control module. This system is armed by locking the power locks with the door open or by using the remote keyless entry transmitter. The transmitter will also disarm the system, as will unlocking either front door with a key. The body control module monitors all the input switches from the doors, hood, and trunk and triggers the horn and lights when necessary. Two new components have been added for this system. One is a parking light relay that's located on the steering column. This enables the parking lights to flash along with the headlights when the alarm is activated. The other new component is a flashing LED that's located on the instrument panel at the ATC sun sensor. Its flashing tells you of its arming status. Since the body control module operates the system, it can be diagnosed with the scan tool or MDS. Another new feature that's optional on the LHS, New Yorker, Concord, Intrepid, and Vision is an auto-dimming rearview mirror. Here's how it works. And by the way, you'll need this information to answer Master Tech Quiz question number three. The amount of light hitting the mirror is measured by a photocell and the circuitry in the mirror. Current is sent to the mirror based on the amount of light. The current darkens or lightens the electrochromatic gel that is sandwiched between the mirror glass. Because a higher amount of visibility is needed when backing up, the mirror automatically lightens when the gear selector is placed in reverse. The same kind of mirror is also available on the Dakota for 94. Another change to the Dakota is its new electrically driven speedometer. The elimination of the speedometer cable means easier servicing for you and quieter operation for the customer. We'll move to the outside of the 94 vehicles for some new exterior features after first testing your memory with this question. The new auto dimming rear view mirror has what kind of gel sandwiched between the mirror glass? The answer is electrochromatic gel. The gel lightens or darkens depending on the amount of current sent to it. New for the 94 Wrangler is the Four Seasons Soft Top option. This top probably looks much the same to you as the regular soft top, but it's not. It has the hard top's full metal doors. The biggest difference, though, cannot be seen from the outside. It's the ease with which the top can be erected. In fact, it can easily be done by one person. Molded rubber latches secure the top to the windshield. The rear window and rear side curtains attach the same way as on the regular soft top, and a bag is provided for their protection. The top and frame fold together and are held in the folded position by elastic straps. A more obvious exterior change is the headlights on the Stealth. Notice anything different? 
That's right. Just like on the Laser and Talon in 92, the Stealth has changed from retractable to aero-style headlights. The standard headlights on the LHS will also be slightly different. Not the headlights themselves, but the new automatic headlight system. By rotating the headlight switch knob counterclockwise to the A position, the exterior lights switch on and off depending on the ambient light sensed by the same photocell used for the automatic temperature control system. Like the ATC and also the vehicle theft alarm we've mentioned, this system is operated by the body controller. In this automatic mode, as a personal safety feature, the exterior lights will remain on for one and a half minutes after you turn off the ignition. When the wipers are on, this system will turn on the headlights when the ambient light is slightly brighter than if the wipers were off. This increases visibility in bad weather. Besides being standard on the LHS, this new system is optional on the New Yorker. A new government regulation has also meant exterior lighting changes for 94. Specifically, center high-mounted stoplights are now required on trucks and multi-purpose vehicles. Look for a Master Tech quiz question on these lights. On the Dakota, the light is in the tailgate. The wiring passes from the rear sill of the box through the base of the gate. The connector on the front face of the sill allows the removal of the tailgate. For the new Ram van and wagon, the light is above the rear door. The Cherokee has its light mounted inside the lift gate at the base of the window. It attaches over the existing trim, making it easier to service. The stoplight on the Wrangler is a little more involved. It's mounted to a bracket that's attached to the spare tire mount. Power for the light passes through contact buttons on the hinge side of the tailgate, allowing the gate to be opened and closed. While we're looking at some electrical components, let's move on to some wiring changes made to minivans after we look at another question first. True or false? Power is sent to the Wrangler's center high-mounted stoplight by running a detachable wiring harness into the tailgate. False. Contact buttons, not a wiring harness, pass power into the tailgate at the hinge area. The one big wiring change for 94 is the addition of a power distribution center to the minivans. The PDC is a central mounting point for underhood relays and fuses that gives a more orderly appearance and is easier to service. It's located close to the battery to minimize voltage drop in the wiring. You'll need to know this for a Master Tech Quiz question. The mini fuses used inside the PDC are designed for underhood use with wide coated terminals for high current and corrosion resistance. The ignition off draw fuse in the PDC is used as a switch. The yellow holder keeps the fuse in place when it's disconnected. There have also been some wiring changes around the minivan instrument panel. In addition to the relay center on the left side of the instrument panel, there is now a micro relay center behind the center console. A new fuse block with mini fuses is located under the instrument panel to the left of the steering column. Previously, it was reached through an access panel. The data link connector is next to the fuse panel. The body control module has also been moved. It's now behind the center console instead of behind the driver's lower knee panel, as was the case previously. Now we'll look at another question, and after that we'll discuss the new minivan passenger airbag. Pay attention to the information. Master Tech Quiz question number five will test you on it. Where is the minivan's new power distribution center located? The answer is that it's located near the battery to minimize voltage drop. The new passenger airbag on the minivans is unique for a few reasons. First is the method of inflation. This airbag not only uses the standard solid chemical inflation device, but it also uses compressed gas. That's why it's called a hybrid airbag. A switch in the gas cylinder monitors the gas pressure while the ignition is on. The airbag warning light will now come on to warn of a drop in the gas cylinder's pressure in addition to the items that triggered it in previous years. A trouble code will also be set if the pressure drops. The deployment door is located on top of the instrument panel. The impact sensor for the minivan airbag system is also unique. That's right, I said sensor, not sensors. There is just one 
piezoelectric accelerometer used to detect collision. Do you remember what we used in the past? On previous systems, there were two impact sensors and a safing sensor in the diagnostic module. The single sensor on this system, known as the accelerometer, is located inside the airbag control module, which is mounted under the instrument panel behind the center console. The accelerometer produces voltage when it senses a strong decelerating force. It can determine both the direction and intensity of an impact. Because this accelerometer senses mechanical strain, it's important the module that houses it is installed and fastened correctly. Failure to do so could result in unwanted airbag deployment. The LeBaron convertible also gets a passenger airbag for 94. It's similar to the one on the 93 Concorde Intrepid Envision. To make room for the airbag, the right speaker was moved slightly and the air conditioning ducts were reshaped. This system uses the same sensors and electronic controls as previous models. The LeBaron sedan does not get the passenger airbag, but it and the Spirit, Acclaim, Sundance, and Shadow models get two-point passenger motorized seat belts. The lap belt on this system must be manually fastened by the passenger. The MMC vehicles also have some airbag-related changes. For 94, the Stealth gets a passenger airbag. The airbag is inflated by the standard solid chemical method. The airbag module is mounted behind a door in the face of the instrument panel. The motorized two-point belt has been replaced with an active three-point belt. In additional restraint news for the Stealth, the front and rear seat belt retractors can have their tension locked for use with the child safety seat. The Colt, Summit, Colt Vista, Summit Wagon, Laser, and Talon now also have this feature on their non-motorized rear belts. The big news with Colt, Summit, Colt Vista, and Summit Wagon, however, is that they now have driver's side airbags. The airbags are mounted in the center of the steering wheel and use a solid chemical inflator. The system also uses a single-point piezoelectric impact sensor that's housed in the diagnostic unit, much like the minivan system. With the addition of the airbag, the motorized two-point belt has been replaced with an active three-point belt on the driver's side. The motorized belt on the passenger side continues in use for 94. Also be aware that when working on any MMC airbag system, the wait time after disconnecting the negative battery cable has been increased from 30 to 60 seconds. As you know, the Concorde, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS already had passenger side airbags. But as a running change for 94 and a half, they'll use a hybrid passenger airbag with a new control module. The system is similar to the one on minivans that we just discussed. Other restrained system changes include a new driver side airbag on Dakota. Since this system is so similar to that used on the new Ram, Review the bonus release on the RAM technical features for more information. Now let's move on to another question. The new minivan passenger airbag uses how many impact sensors? The answer is that it uses just one sensor, a piezoelectric accelerometer. Back in the May Master Tech, we said that flex fuel versions of the Concorde, Intrepid, and Vision would be produced. Well, that time is now, because a flex fuel version of the 3.3 liter V6 will be available for these cars in 94. The vehicles are similar to the flex fuel Spirit and Acclaim we discussed, with the exception of a new overhead console that displays the percentage of methanol in the fuel. Coming up for 94 and a half, there will be company for the compressed natural gas Ram van and wagon. The CNG-powered 3.3-liter Caravan, Caravan CV, and the Voyager. It's expected that 500 units of these vehicles will be produced. Another environmental area Chrysler Corporation is making great progress is in the conversion of R134A air conditioning refrigerant. For the 94 model year, these vehicles now have systems using R134A. The Colt Summit, Colt Vista Summit Wagon, Stealth, LeBaron Convertible, Sundance Shadow, Dakota, the new Ram pickup, the Ram van and wagon, and the Viper. Yes, that's right. The Viper gets factory installed air conditioning for 94. The Cherokee and Wrangler will make the changeover to R134A in January of 94. Remember that even though these systems all use R134A, 
Not all the systems have similar service procedures. So check your new service manuals to familiarize yourself with the system before beginning to work on it. Now our last question. Flex fuel versions of which vehicles will be new for 94? The answer is that for 94, there will be flex fuel versions of the Concorde, Intrepid, and Vision. Well, we've covered a lot of new changes for 94, including a look at engine changes, transmission changes, and chassis components. We've also looked at new interior and exterior features, wiring changes, what's new in restraint systems, and Chrysler's continuing commitment to a better environment. It's important that when these vehicles get to you, you're not surprised by these changes. That's why we hope this program has helped you get familiar with them before they arrive in your dealership. We'll see you next month on Master Tech.